What's going on? Bonus time, man. You know, every every once in a while, we, we give you guys a little bit of bonus footage when we got a real special guest, and we got Big Gene, Gene Deal, a.k.a. Mr. Raw Deal, The Last Big Night, a.k.a. Bad Boy, former Bad Boy Security, a.k.a. he saved a lot of people in the rap game's lives that you might not know about, but you might want to know, but we're going to get to all of that right now. And uh, Gene, man, we, we definitely appreciate you coming up. I know you, you came all the way to Brooklyn for us, man. We appreciate you. Sharp place, man. You know what I'm saying? It long. <laughs> so uh, let, let, let's go back in, man. We, 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 when, we, when we left off, uh, you, were, you were telling us how Big's uh, death affected you. You mentioned, you know, how to this day, you know, Puff has never showed gratitude for, uh, you know, for what you did for him and saving his life on more than one occasion, you know, you, you saved his life. Right. But, I, you know, I want to, what I want to ask you is, you know, what, what's your thoughts on people that hang around Puff after all of this stuff goes down, you know, because he still has a lot of people that was really close with Big around him 24-7. And these are people that would, you know, really are, would be closer to Big, Big's peoples that are still with Puff now. Well, um, I don't really have any thought or care about it, you know what I'm saying? Hey, I don't tell the next man how to eat. Yeah. You understand? Yeah, still yeah. going to make money, I guess, so that's, you know. Listen, man, I learned a long time ago. It's two things you don't tell a man, how to make love to his wife and how to spend his money. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> it goes another way, but we're going to keep it clean. Yeah, this, this is TV. Yeah. <laughs> so that's, I don't get involved in that. You know, that's their own, that's they own conscience. That's their own mind. That's what they think and how they believe. You know, if they don't have a problem with it, I, I, I don't think about it. I, I'm, I'm, I'm not into it like that. You know, um, they have to come to grips with their own feelings. That's 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 their own that's their own stuff. Not nothing for me. Do you um do do you speak to to anybody from those days from when you worked at Bad Boy still? Like, are you in communication? When I see them, when when I see them, I don't make an effort. You know what I'm saying? Okay. I see little seeds out in Aruba mm -hmm. this summer. We chopped it up or whatever a little bit. Uh, I saw D, D Rock a couple of years ago. Before we even started the Raw Deal project, because I wanted to sit down and talk with him. Yeah. And uh, he was supposed to get back with me. And when he saw me, we chopped it up. After that, it was nothing. So, you know, nah, it was not nothing we do. Then when I see some of the junior mafia, they show me love. Like, yo, what up, Gene? What's happening? And there's never been in no, no animosity, no bad thing, because everybody know, you know, the part I played. And they know that I was a serious dude. I want to fast forward a little bit um, to something that's actually going on right now because you, in the documentary, you spoke on on Big's uh, feelings uh, for Cam and how he thought Cam was the best rapper coming out of Harlem at that time, and how he didn't really get along with Mace. And um, and I know you, being from when you, well when you came to New York, being in Harlem, the connection that you had with Mace, him being from Harlem, and now him and Cam are still going back and forth at it. Do you Have you been following what's been going on with them? I, I see it, you know what I'm saying? It seemed like Big was kind of wrong, right? Well, if you, if you go by the two <laughs> if, you go by that, if you go by that tape, it just went out. Yeah, that just went Big out. might have been wrong because Big wrong said, yeah, Big thought he was a better rapper. He thought uh, Cameron, he yeah. said, that's what he said to me. That's why he, you know, wanted Cameron. He thought Cameron was a better rapper and then he didn't like the fact that Puff changed Mace from murder mace to mace. Yeah. You know, that came out of his own mouth. You know what I'm saying? They used to, you know, joke around and tease him about that. But after this last thing, it seemed like the murder is back, huh? Yeah, he might, <laughs> might, he might be. He definitely took the gloves off uh, with that uh, diss track yeah. that, that, that he put out. So yeah. I don't know, man. That, that, that one is rough. But yeah. But, um, but now, all right. So, so go back. Big, big is done. You come back to uh, you come back to New York, and things have changed for you. And Puff kind of just like, well, you already said he act like he didn't know you to to Miss Wallace, but you did wind up actually going back to work at Bad Boy. Yeah, we was at the I think it was a Super Bowl in Atlanta. Uh, so all, it was a all, it was uh, was it the All Game? I think it was the Super Bowl or something like in Atlanta. It was ninety nine. You were a sports fan? I don't know. Was the Super Bowl in Atlanta in ninety nine? Come on now. Statman, you got stat, stat, huh? you got to ask Statman that. <laughs> well, we, it's we, possible. I don't, I don't. we were in Atlanta and there was a party, and uh, 
some girls that went to wanted to go to Justin's. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Uh, Puff never really stopped any of my movement around Bad Boy or going to the parties or nothing like that. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, I wasn't a big fan of nothing, no way. So if I did show up, nobody did or nobody stopped me from moving or going where I went. So I was up in Justin's. They let me right in with the people I was with. And I was just chilling, having fun with some girls I knew. And Wolf was like, yo, what up, Gene? I said, like, what's up? He said, you in the back, come in the back. I was like, no, I'm good. Yo, Gene, come in the back. So I went in the back. They was under a table. And then Wolf said, yo, Puff, bring Gene back to work, man. You understand? And uh, Puff said, you want to come back to work? I said, we'll see. What's up? He said, come to office on Monday. Then I started right back up. Like nothing that ever happened. And then, but you stopped eventually? Yeah, 2004, I stopped. You know, so it went from 99 to 2004. And were you it, still his direct bodyguard at the time, or you were just? Well, it was like each one of us had our days. Okay. I had Same Friday, Saturdays, and Sundays, okay. you know what I'm saying? And then Wolf would do? Yeah, and then some special occasions, or they asked me, yo, Gene, could you fly with him, or Gene, could you do this, could you do that? And then if I can get off work, you understand, I would do that or whatever like that, you know. But still the same shit. So when, I mean, you left this, when you left again for the, for the final time, this is after Wolf's death. Mm -hmm. And I know that you and Wolf were, were, were really close. So how, like, how, how did Wolf's death affect you? Well, me and Wolf was cool. You know, it, 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 it's a, we had a, a uh, 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 crazy relationship prior to Bad Boy. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Uh, he actually, you know, I'm a New York State parole officer, and he was on my he was on my case low. <laughs> you know, before he even, you know, I even knew yeah, who he was or whatever like that. And it, it it was just it was a funny it was a funny thing. I was like, damn, this kid is on my case low. Yeah. And then he wasn't because. He he went from work released into to some place in the Bronx, and then I think that it was just by paper. I never really met him. Yeah, you understand. So um, it affected me. You know, I, I took it kind of hard. You know what I'm saying? Because Wolf was about to. He was trying to open up a club in Miami. Mm -hmm. He was about to take some money, buy him a club, and you know, going to invest his money in a club in Miami. Uh, and he was a good dude. You understand? You know, like all, you find some street dude, a little hot headed, you know, you know, he a bruiser. You understand? So, um, it affect me anytime somebody lose their child. You understand? Somebody you lose their brother, you know, their son, their father. You know, it affected me. And then by me knowing him. Yeah. It was crazy. And then, of course, uh, you still have a relationship with, with Wolf's mother. Yeah. I have a real close relationship with his mother. And yeah. that the relationship between Puff and and, and Wolf's mother is kind of sour. I don't even know. I, I know that he doesn't, you know, he contacted her when he was doing the show. Mm -hmm. And after he did that big show, you know, he, he ain't, she ain't heard from him no more. You understand? I know for a fact that he never paid her his money that Wolf, he owed Wolf. I know this for a fact, yeah. you know, because I was there when him and Wolf had that conversation. You understand? And before Wolf died, for whatever reason, you understand, he told his mother, yo, if anything happened to your mom, you know, and this was the week, and this coming from his, his mother. Yeah. The week before he died, you know, he, you know, he's talking to my mom. Anything happened to me, you know what I'm saying? You know, Puff owed me 300000 and everything like that. And I told her the number before she even opened her mouth. Because Wolf said it in front of Puff. He's like, yeah. yo, my man, you owe me like 300000 And they was arguing and fighting behind her. You know what I'm saying? And then Puff said, when I do this universal deal, I'm going to give you your money. And I ain't going to F with you no more. And Wolf said, you're going to always have to F with me. You know what I'm saying? And laughing and joking with him. You know what I'm yeah. saying? But the money thing was serious. But he never paid him. And the crazy thing about it, Miss... Miss Jones went to Puff two weeks after he died. And Puff said these exact words. 
All your son wanted to do was get high and smoke weed. He had delusions of grandeur. I don't owe him no money. Two weeks after he died, he wow. told he told his kid mother that. So I, I take it she never got that got that money then. She never got it. That's crazy. Now you know the thing got things recorded in writing, like you know. Yeah. Well, because I mean, I guess I would that, that. I mean, yeah, you never would have thought. Yeah, he didn't think at that time that. Well, when he owed him the money, that that he would he would have tried to you know do that. No, he thought it. he was gonna be here for it. Yeah. We never know, bro. Yeah. We never know. Now, in the documentary, you I mean, you talk about uh, Wolf and Riz in the documentary, and they, you know, they were kind of wild boys, you know, back in the day. And I know, you know, you recently you put out the Twenty One Questions uh, recently, but you, you know, a lot of people been asking about the whole, you know, the whole Quad Studios and the whole Haitian Jack situation because people were talking about allegedly Haitian Jack, you know, extorting Puff or or whatever. And I know you spoke on it, but could you kind of break it down? Could, I know you said no. That's that's not the case, but I don't. Why why do people even feel that way about it? It's about show, man. You know, like uh, I don't have no relationship with Jack. Mm -hmm. We we have mutual people that we knew. I knew people in his crew. Mm -hmm. You know, I knew people he dealt with, the people that he dealt with, and uh, people around him. But Jack wasn't no dude where he could extort nobody in the bad boy camp. Mm -hmm. Not at all. I don't know where people got that from. You understand? Cause I know I, I I heard that I've been hearing that like stuff like that, like those yeah. kind of chatterers. But I mean that's just all that that's that's this internet stuff, and that's that's people trying to uh, glamorize people and make them bigger than what they were. Yeah, you understand. So all right, so now you you, you didn't just do security for Puff though. You you saved a lot of people's lives outside of Puzzle. And, you know, you spoke about some of the documentary. You spoke about a little bit about Dougie Fresh in the documentary. Right. And I know we've had, you know, conversations about other guys in the, in hip-hop that you've saved uh, mm. as well. But tell us the craziest story of somebody that you had to save. I think the craziest is probably, you know, I had a couple crazies. But Halle Berry is probably the craziest one. Because I never thought she was going to be the star that she, she was. was. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? We put that in the documentary. Mm -hmm. And uh, Christopher Williams know this to be true. You know what I'm saying? Um, he had her hemmed up in a club. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if she even knew. But he had a gun in his hand and had her by the throat. Mm -hmm. And I snatched him up with the gun in his hand. Brought him outside the California club. And I took his gun and everything like that. And when we got him outside, I was like, yo, my man, what's what's wrong with you? He said, I don't know, man. She just be having me bug like that, man. She be driving me crazy. And I was like, <laughs> yo, all right, then I'll see you later, man. And so as he was walking off, he just stopped. He said, yo, can I get my gun back? <laughs> <laughs> And he had a he had a snub nose thirty eight. I took the bullets out and gave him his gun back. So did you ever see Holly Berry after that? Huh? Did you ever see Holly no, Berry? I never after seen that? her after that. Oh man, that was the I wonder if you had seen her how how that conversation. But I, I guess you know she probably was used to do doing that because I know you know I heard and you seen that that people were saying that he was, that that he was about that life. Yeah, allegedly. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so. Um, I guess she, you know, she didn't even see that part of it. Yeah. You understand? Because he had it low. So, oh, so she just thought he was choking her. He yeah, he just choking her, not realizing to, he had a... Because <laughs> I was like, yo, this dude yeah. was crazy. That, <laughs> yeah. That's crazy. But it, it's been a lot of other stuff, man, you know, that I, you know, I like not to say over, you know. Yeah. The airwaves. Huh? The airwaves. Over, over yeah, because the these guys are, you know, they they big, you know, and you it's know, like stinging all the beef that. You know, no, I ain't worried about no beef, uh, man. I'm sure you know you're not. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying you don't want to. It, it's just it's just unnecessary. It's, it was years ago, yeah. you know, and when people view somebody, see what happens is is that, you know, I seen them when they first got started. See. When, when you see an artist first coming to the game, they so humble. Yeah. 
-hmm. You understand? But I know the change is on the way. Yeah. Yeah. As soon as you get that first big record, when he when he start when he first get that hundred thousand that he could you know spend any kind of way he want to, I know the change is inedible because I've seen it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I've been there. I've been around it. Like me and Trip Young, we're all big time now. Yeah, <laughs> yeah you know, that's a joke. We never change. <laughs> <laughs> I'm about to blow up. Next thing you know, hey, yo, can I come back to your show? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll pull a puff on you. Oh, we don't know him. <laughs> we don't know. We never heard of that guy. <laughs> is is that how it was with Puff though? Like once he started really getting money, then he just like. I mean, well, he was getting money back then too, but Puff was getting money. You know what I'm saying? But um, I think that. Puff was real honest about himself. He said, I don't know how to spend money on dudes. Mm -hmm. So when Big was around, like one time we was in D.C., uh, Big made them close up the uh, uh, one of the stores. Mm -hmm. I think D-Rock birthday was the 17th. Mine's the 16th of October. And they closed the store and let us buy whatever we wanted to buy. We bought like five, six different outfits or whatever like that. Mm -hmm. And Puff was like, yo, I don't know how to spend money on dudes. Then one time he bought me and Wolf a Versace leather jacket, like we was gonna walk around with leather jackets with them and everything like that. Then give me that money or something like that. Then I don't want no Versace jacket. Man. I could take that two thousand and, yeah. and bought a hoopty or something. He was. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, but you know, he wasn't the dude at that time that knew how to break bread with guys who was holding them down. Because Wolf told him, "Say, yo, dog, you could give each one of us a party a month, and we could buy our own house." Yeah. Now he could go to he could have went to a club, say, yo, listen to me. Yo, we're gonna give a we wanna give a party, y'all can have a bar, all we want is the door. Mm -hmm. And gave us the door. Yeah. Gave one us the door this month. We take that and that's the down payment for our house. Then do the month. next month, the next month. And Wolf told him that. And look, he wasn't doing it. No. And he's still not. So do because I mean, I clearly I mean at that time, I mean, if you look at the guys that were around Bad Boy at the time, I mean I don't think anybody's really, I mean, Mace joined the church, Loon, uh, Black Rob, uh, Mark Curry, all these dudes is gone. But is do, do you, I mean, I guess, I mean, Puff May is treating his artists differently now. I mean, Fresh Montana's sticking around. I don't know none of their business. You know what I'm saying? The, you know. He's probably still cheap with them too. Like, but Well, I think it's about people are a little smarter right. now than they I mean, were before. People got it in writing. It ain't like yeah. $300,000 on somebody's word. Like, yeah. you know. it's, it's about management now. It ain't about relationships. It's about who you got as a manager and who's putting your paperwork work. Because like Big told me, yo, that first deal I got was I got jerked. Okay, That's yeah. why I had to sell Puff my marketing and my publishing. Mm -hmm. But I can't be mad at him. Because he taught me how to get money. That came out of his mouth. Yeah. And he was going to be good after his next deal. If he yeah. didn't, if that didn't happen to him, he would have been good. Oh, yeah. He would have been good. Now, back to that night, you said you did a deposition against the for the LAPD case. What did you feel as far as, obviously, there was something fishy going on. How did you feel? What, what What's your belief of what happened? Well, L the LAPD, um, even though... They come from a professional organization. You got to realize sometimes it's the people who work for the organization mm -hmm. because they were illegally taping me without my permission. Then the tape clicked off. And I said, yo, my man, what's that? And they looked at each other. I said, y'all taping me? Now they can't move. You understand? Because they, they want to keep me, they want me to keep on talking, but now they got to change the tape. Yeah. You understand? Well, and they say, yeah, man, because we be forgetting stuff. I said, man, listen, I'm here as a person that's trying to help y'all. I'm law enforcement, y'all law enforcement, and you're going to take me without my permission? Yeah. You understand? And then they showed me some pictures, you understand, that I told the FBI about with me, Puff, and the dude who killed Big in it. You understand? But they had the face shaded oh, out. Oh. You understand? And they told me they was going to come back or bring me to L.A. so I could, once they get a better deposit of the of the face. Yeah. And I never seen them again. And I, and I, cause I, we got we got we got to wrap it up. So I just got two right. two last questions for you though. I know you know with everything that was going on on with Big. If if it comes out that LAPD is involved in the death of Biggie Smalls, what happens? 
There's nothing because they already had a case with it. What they uh, someone what they did was they did their own investigation, and then they 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 put out these stories with their with their officers to identify them from being involved in it. Mm -hmm. But that was a setup. That was a professional setup. You know the grade of bullets, the way it happened, the setup. The, the, the cops are all on the other side. See, the, the people is not telling the story. Even the Fox News didn't tell it. The, the people all on the other side, they, 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 a, they do something over here, and then they call, and we on this side of the, the, the museum. Yeah. The altercation happened on the other side of the museum. Big get killed on the side, and the cops and the ambulance all the way on the other side, and we on this side. You know what I mean? So uh, nothing is going to happen because... Um, they already pretty much tried to clear themselves or cleared themselves. Yeah, and there was a lot of stuff that they uncovered on that uh, Fox uh, special as well that a lot of people didn't know right. uh, about in regards to them being involved. And then, but finally, because we got to go, do you do you feel like you accomplished everything that you wanted to accomplish with Raw Deal? I think that I told the story. Uh... I didn't accomplish what I wanted to accomplish because no one ever questioned me. Okay. Nobody from Bad Boy, they know. Nobody from the radio state. All these people who love big, love the big story, <laughs> wanted to get to the truth, wanted to get to the matter. They never, they never second questioned me. And I I would I would have thought, uh, one of these news outlets or somebody would have tried to find a hole in my story. Yeah. And that was, and, 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 and it's rough because I know but when they, I, I'm sorry to interrupt, but when they justify it, it brings more publicity to the issue too. Like if a big name came out there and did it, it, it grows even bigger and they're trying to keep it as low as possible. So, and plus they have no it. holes to pull, pull, put into it, but they're not going to, publicly deny anything because that makes the story even bigger right and and what they want to do is, is keep it quiet as possible so that it won't that the people won't see who's at fault yeah. because big camp should have went out the puff he put him uh they took somebody he he, he they took an artist and he put him in a dangerous situation and caused him to lose his life he's responsible for that he gotta he'll be liable if it, if that ever he's liable. Out. So that ain't going that ain't gonna hit the hit the light of day at this point. But um, we definitely I mean you know just being personally from working on the project is definitely something that that changed the game for me as well. And I, you know I will say this as far as you saying people come in to question you, like I sit back and I laugh because especially like when people you talk about Wolf's mother and whatnot. And oh, he didn't know Wolf and, and whatnot. And I just sit back and laugh because I'm like, well, that's funny because Wolf's mother is the person that introduced me to Gene in the first place and got this whole thing right. in motion. So I'd sit back and laugh. But, um, you know, I'm glad that the project is out, especially, you know, being from Brooklyn and, and being up the block from Big, growing up up the block from Big and, and having him be, you know, bringing Big Brothers back, man, you know. But I, I'm definitely glad it's out. If you guys haven't already, make sure you guys go online. It's on YouTube. Shout out to uh, to MREC who, who gave us a platform to put it out through MREC TV and through Forbes DVD. Raw Deal, The Last Big Night, it's in three installments. Make sure you check it out. Make sure you check out everything that goes along with Raw Deal. It's a lot of other stuff that's going on out there. And I think we, in total, we're over, way, well over a million views with everything right now. So make sure that you guys check it out. Raw Deal, The Last Big Night. Big G, man, we appreciate you for coming, man. Thank you. Thanks for having me, man. Till right. so, so, so next time, man. Yes, sir. Till so next time. Good night, everyone. Real fans, real talk.com. Well, Arthur Diamond's tripped young and intern Tom. For the white and black fans, Asia to Manhattan. I'll get all my facts from my bro, Mark the Stats Man. If you're not tuned in, I recommend the CAT scan. Uh -huh, uh -huh. And if your brain checks out, then you deserve a backhand. Sports, <laughs> gossip, all the hot topics. Hey, hey. Real fans, real talk.com. Got it. Uh -huh. They got the hottest bloggers. Is Jeremy Lynn hurt? We'll log on to the site and you can hear it from them first. I'm talking about the latest. Yeah, I'm talking yeah. about the greatest. Yeah, yeah. Go check out the art. Even tell a neighbor, tell him about
Bobby sent ya. From spring to winter, tuning in should be the only thing on your agenda. Certified cosign, you know what I'm about, son. Real fans, real talk. Live from Bedford Stuyvesant, the livest one, representing BK to the fullest, the notorious B.I.G. The only Christopher we acknowledge is Wallace. Raw deal. In 1972, he was introduced to the world, Christopher Wallace, better yet, to Brooklyn, Brooklyn's finest. As a youth coming up, life in the hood wouldn't be so good. Christopher didn't have a wicked jump shot, so he was forced to sell crack rock. The clouds started to part. The sun started to shine. And in steps who? World renowned tycoon. Record breaking and record making. Puff Daddy. Fast forward to 1994. Platinum, gold, Grammy, show. Until one day. Me and Puff was going everywhere in Cali, you know what I'm saying? I thought that the kid had like a death wish. Here what really happened from someone that was really there. Former head of security for Bad Boy Entertainment, Gene Deal. Nigga Puff came out and he grabbed my arm. Like, Yo, Gene, Gene, we gotta pray. We gotta pray. I say, pray for what? That nigga's dead. And walked out the hospital door. Raw Deal, the last big night, coming soon.